tax planning tips for physicians on this week's medical economics pulse. So make sure when you design a financial plan for the year 2021, you design it in such a way in an event if a loss would happen, your assets are protected. And a fiduciary financial advisor should be able to take a look at the 360 degree angle of your overall financial plan and can take care of your state planning, asset protection, and tax planning needs, all of it under one umbrella very efficiently. Tax day is quickly approaching. So what should physicians do to lower their tax burden and prime themselves for a financially successful 2021? I sat down with Syed Nishat, a partner at the Wall Street Alliance Group to discuss tax planning, cash balance plans, and much more financial advice for physicians. Syed Nishat, thanks very much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks Chris for having me. So, you know, all of our physicians know the importance of tax planning. Um, when, when planning for retirement, um, what do you recommend for physicians for the tax year 2020? Um, what, do, what do they need to do? Uh, thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. Uh, at Wall Street Alliance Group, we provide a wealth management solution for physicians across the United States. Uh, tax planning is extremely important for physicians. Uh, one of my clients who's a pediatrician, uh, heart practice is still down 30% from pre-pandemic level. Uh, we helped the client with the PPP loan and definitely the grants from HHS helped her to sustain the practice. But now we are facing a new challenge. Uh, all the grants from HHS are part of the income. So like many physicians, she's also looking for a way to defer money in taxes. And retirement plan is one of the best way to accomplish it. Like every $10,000 you contribute to a retirement plan, if you're in a 35% tax bracket, we're looking at a tax savings of $3,500 immediately. Now, there are different types of retirement plan out there, but just to give you an idea how a cash balance plan works, if you're a self-employed physician and you are 60 year old, for the year 2020 in a cash balance plan alone, you can contribute almost $260,000. And this money is immediately tax deductible. So if you're in a 35% tax bracket, we are looking at a tax savings, almost $91,000. So obviously everyone's situation is unique, but if you're a self-employed physician, make sure you can speak to your CPA about cash balance plan. So obviously it's calendar year 2020 right now. Can you still do a cash balance plan for 2020 uh, for that year's taxes? It's a great question, Chris. Yes, you can still adopt a cash balance plan for the year 2020. It used to be a very cumbersome process that December of that year, you want to contribute, you have to adopt the cash balance plan, but SECURE Act was passed last year and it made it very easy. Uh, and for year 2020, you actually have until your tax filing deadline to adopt the cash balance plan, fund it, and also get the full deduction as well. So for most S corporation, the tax planning deadline is March 15th. But if you file for extension, you have until September 15 to adopt the cash balance plan and fund it and get the full deduction as well. Okay, great. But besides the cash balance plan, are there any other type of IRA or a retirement account that's avail available that you can still take advantage of for 2020? Sure. So besides a cash balance plan, if you want a lower contribution amount, so there's something called a SEP IRA account. It's called self-employment plan. In a SEP IRA, you can contribute 25% of your W-2 wage for $57,000, whichever is less, by March 15, and which extension by September 15. Now, straightforward IRA account, this is nothing to do with the corporation. It is under individual name. Uh, if you're over the age of 50, the maximum contribution is $7,000 for your spouse and $7,000 for yourself. As long as you have earned income, you can contribute by April 15. And again, all the funds are still tax deductible. So while there's a lot of physicians who still own their own practices and are self-employed, there's also a number of physicians now who are working for a larger practice or a hospital or some other arrangement like that as an employee. So what, what should those types of physicians look into when we're talking about retirements and saving and things like that? Yeah, it's a great question, Chris. And so physicians who are employed by the hospital, uh, after they max out their 401k, they should consider a uh, backdoor Roth IRA account. Now, backdoor Roth IRA strategy is one of the uh, underutilized strategy, in my opinion, in the physician community. 
So the way the backdoor Roth IRA work, you open an IRA account and fund it with post-tax dollar amount and convert it immediately to a Roth IRA. Now, remember, there's no income restriction during this conversion. And since you convert the money immediately from an IRA account to a Roth IRA, there's no gain taxes on principal and also the taxes on the gain will be very minuscule. And in this method, you actually have a Roth IRA. And the beauty of Roth IRA is that during distribution, there are no taxes. And physician, during retirement, we have seen there is still in a high tax bracket and they're looking for some tax-free income vehicle. And Roth IRA is a great way to accomplish it. Uh, and again, for the year 2020, you can contribute $7,000 for yourself and your spouse. As long as you don't have any other IRA account, this conversion will work absolutely fine. So make sure you speak to your CP and financial advisor about backdoor Roth IRA as well. Are there any other accounts that offer tax deduction as a benefit besides an IRA? Yeah, so a lot of physicians, we see that they have high deductible health insurance because they tend to healthy and they take care of themselves. So they usually go for high premium health insurance. So if you have a high uh, deductible health insurance, uh, most employer offers something called HSA account or health savings account. And an HSA account for a family member, uh, you can contribute about $7,100 by April 15th for the year 2020. And again, the uh, amount is completely tax deductible. But the beauty, uh, Chris, about HSA account is uh, after the age of 65, you can withdraw the money for non-health reason. Uh, so it actually can work fine uh, to supplement your retirement account as well. So if you have high deductible insurance, definitely consider an HSA account for yourself and for your family. Okay, great. So be, beyond retirement accounts, what other tax strategies should physicians look into? Um, are there options uh, with real estate, for example, if you own your own practice and your own facility? What, just what other options are out there? Yeah, excellent question, Chris. So it's not uncommon for physicians to have their own practice and the practice on the building and uh, they pay themselves a rent for inbound patients. So if you own a lot of real estate, uh, you might wanna take a look at cost segregation study. So the way the cost segregation works that if you have a commercial real estate, the typical depreciation is 39 years, meaning that every year that depreciation happened, you get to write off the depreciation happened from the income derived from real estate. Cost segregation, all it does, it accelerates the depreciation from 39 years to five to seven years. So what happened, you have a bigger depreciation now, you can use it to offset any active or passive income from real estate. Now, physicians are actively working usually in a high tax bracket. So if you have some other income coming from real estate, consider cost segregation. It will definitely help in real estate income tax saving. What's the timing of this process of cost segregation? Like when do you have to do it? How long does it take? Is it, it sounds like it's a formal process that you have to undergo. Yes, so, so Chris, uh, cost segregation uh, study, you have to actually have an engineer come over to the property and take a look. So it's not as simple as like opening an IRA account and get a deduction. And it takes some time. It takes a couple of weeks to about a month to do it. And the typical cost segregation costs about $3,500 to $7,000, depending on the size of the property. But still, you have time to do the cost segregation. Uh, as long as you have filed for extension, you can actually do a cost segregation study for real estate until September 15, and again, utilize the depreciation to write off any real estate income for the year 2020. Um, a common question that we always hear is when you know pre preparing your taxes is you know standard deduction versus itemizing. Um, what you know, I know the standard deduction has has gone up. Um, what you know, what should you look into as a physician um, when you're considering those options? Yes, Chris. So uh, as you mentioned, the standard deduction has doubled to almost twenty four thousand eight hundred. And uh, it might be very simpler to just go for the standard deduction. You don't have to do too much, too much work. But most of our physicians find, uh, we see they have a high mortgages amount. They have a state tax they have to pay. They have the license renewal. They have the malpractice insurance renewal. So they easily go over the standard deduction. So it might be a good idea to go over your expenses for year 2020, see if you can itemize it so you can get a higher write-off for the year 2020. 
Can you please explain the importance of net operating loss? What is that and what does it mean for taxes in 2020? Yeah, great question, Chris. So NOL uh, stands for net operating loss and NOL happens in a company when a particular year, their overall loss after all the expenses. Typically NOL, you carry forward to offset any income. But this is significant, uh, like you mentioned for the year 2020, because CARES Act was passed last year to help the small business. And there's a provision in CARES Act that if you have NOL in the year 2020, you can go back and claim the loss against any income you may have up to five years. So it is very significant uh, because let's say you have a surgical center and you are a physician and the surgical center was down uh, in year 2020, let's say half a million dollar. Now the same surgical center, for example, let's say for the last four years had an income of $100,000 each year. What you could do in year 2020, you can just take this half a million dollar loss go back for the last four years and offset it from the income and get the refund back from the IRS. Now, this is only available this year, year 2020. Uh, and after that, it's not gonna be available. So it all depends on how the company is set up. But if you have NOL, if you have a loss in your corporation, make sure you speak to your CPA, whether NOL makes sense for you or not. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about 2021. What, uh, what should physicians focus on in terms of financial planning um, looking forward? What, what are some, what's, what's some uh, good ideas or advice that you have for physicians? Sure. So Chris, obviously we are talking about the last minute year end tax planning. Uh, but one thing I would like to conclude by saying that what we have learned from year 2020, the only thing certain in life is uncertainty. Uh, and uh, I, my client, who's a nephrologist in Dallas, is still fighting for his life uh, due to COVID-19. So physician is there in the front line to fighting this war against COVID. Uh, so it's very important right now to sit back and take a look at your will and trust, make sure those are updated. So just in case anything goes wrong, you at least have the power of attorney, health proxy, those are all covered. And also for physician, it's very easy to get lawsuits. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the recently passed relief package from Congress does not have any provisions for small business, any protect protection in an event if the business gets lost from COVID-19. So make sure when you design a financial plan for the year 2021, you design it in such a way in an event if a loss would happen, your assets are protected. And a fiduciary financial advisor should be able to take a look at the 360 degree angle of your overall financial plan and can take care of your state planning, asset protection, and tax planning needs, all of it under one umbrella very efficiently. Saeed and Naishat, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate your insight. Thank you, Chris, for having me. I really appreciate it.